Home buying can be a complicated and overwhelming process. It's definitely not as simple as buying a cup of coffee. Well, at least pre-COVID. Don't worry, ABQ Expert is here to walk you through everything that is home buying. So, you're ready to buy a house in Albuquerque. Maybe you've lived here your whole life and ready to buy your first home. Or maybe you've finally moved here to get your hands on the best chili in the world. Either way, I'm here to break down the home buying process for you. There's basically 10 key steps, uh, but the first three can be done in any sequence, but I recommend the following order. Why is getting pre-qualified so important? Well, if you're not pre-qualified, you're unlikely to get a loan for a house. Most buyers go the mortgage loan route because they don't have the cash on hand and the quantities needed to buy a house. Unless you're a millionaire, high school chemistry teacher, or looking for a real fixer upper, you're probably going to be working with a lender. How do I get pre-qualified? Well, go ahead and talk with your local bank or credit union or find a local mortgage company. You can also do this online. There's companies on there and they'll connect you with local lend or with lenders. Uh, just make sure you do your research. Why do I need a real estate agent? Well, your real estate professional is there to make sure that your purchase agreement, your contract, is fully executed. They're negotiating with the selling side, they're working with inspectors, appraisers, the title company, and they're getting you into the homes that you want to see without you having to call up every single listing broker, right? Uh, doing all these things that you probably don't want to be doing on your own. The best part? Your realtor don't cost a thing. That's right. Selling side pays buyer broker commissions, typically uh, through the list price. It's usually added in there. So go ahead and start doing your research for somebody that you want to work with, right? Somebody who's fast, responsive, friendly, knows the city, and is a great negotiator. If you've been living through the first half of the 21st century, you've already probably been looking at house porn online through some of those major players. Zillow, Trulia, Realtor, Redfin, or the lesser known Bluefin. Okay, maybe not that last one, but you get my point. There are tons of resources out there for consumers for you to get an idea of what houses are out there, how much things are costing in your city, all good stuff. So if you're already working with an agent and this isn't your first step, they're also, they're also will probably hook you up with a portal that ties directly into the MLS. Uh, this means that you'll see when things hit the market live and when they go into pending, so you're right on top of things. Plus, they tailor your search to meet your needs uh, and do much of, the heavy lift, lift, much of the heavy lifting for you. <laughs> Yay! You found some houses that you love. Now it's time to play out your HGTV fantasies. So, you go online, you found a house that you love, send it to your realtor, and they're going to get you in the door. All right, now due to our global pandemic, things have changed slightly, right? Um, so some sellers are requiring a prequal letter or a pre-approval letter, so this is even more vital that you get those first steps sorted out before we go start looking into houses actively. Uh, some uh, buyers are also doing some more virtual house hunting sessions with their realtors just to narrow down their search even more. This whole step can be really short. Maybe you find the right house uh, within the first few visits. Or it can be really, really long and it's going to take dozens and dozens of houses until you find the right one. The key thing is your realtor is going to get you in the door and you're going to find the right house. You fell in love with the house. All right, now it's time to make that offer. Your agent's going to go ahead and sit down, talk with you over the phone, virtually, in person, really depends, um, and figure out what you want to offer. Now, what you're offering is entirely situation dependent. It really depends on how long this house has been on the market, what the inventory around it's looking like, uh, if it needs repairs, if it's overpriced, all these things, so entirely situation dependent. Some buyers are having to enter into a multiple offer situation, which really changed the game, right? Uh, so sometimes you're gonna have to offer more money or you know a tighter closing deadline. Some buyers are entering into uh, uh, putting in an offer for a house that's been sitting on the market forever, so they're obviously you know, maybe going for a lower list price or having the seller pay for some more things. Either way, your realtor will talk with you, see what's right for what you need to be offering. Uh, now, the big thing is this offer is a contract. So if the seller accepts, hooray, you've started the official countdown to buying a home, right? Uh, that whole home buying process. Now, if the seller doesn't accept right away, you might go into some rounds of counter offers and negotiations, but at the end of the day, after an offer is made, you're eventually going to get accepted and start this whole home buying process. I just Escrow, what the heck is escrow? Escrow is an account that's open to disperse funds for the real estate transaction. Your very first transaction or disbursement is earnest money, right? That five or hundred or a thousand dollars that you agreed upon in that purchase agreement. 
Now, this escrow account is open to the third party title company, and it's the title company's job to do a, quite a number of things, like open up a title search, make sure there's no liens on the house that you're about to buy, like unpaid property taxes, mortgage payments that are overdue, contractors that were never paid, and, and so on. They're also going to be conducting a survey. Not quite like Family Feud, but this survey says that your house is where it says it is and that there's no encroachments coming in on there. The title company is also going to be working alongside your lender to prepare those statements, uh, making sure you know what you're paying for, who's paying for what, and also all those documents that basically says that this house is now going to be yours. All right, now it's time for inspections. That's right, you're almost a homeowner now, so we're conducting inspections. All right, not you. A third party company is gonna be doing all this for you and typically the buyer chooses who's going to be inspecting. Now, what kind of inspections do I need? As a real estate professional, I'm gonna recommend full home inspection, sewer line inspection, and termite and dry rot. Now, that first inspection, that goes over making sure that your house has no major defects and it's gonna point out any flaws that are there. Uh, the second, the sewer line inspection, that's done to make sure that there's no major blockages in your sewer line. So things like mega tree roots or you know, underground colony of lizard people. Uh, the termite and dry rot, that's all done to make sure that you don't have a bunch of insect colonies living in any wood, um, like decks and things like that. Now, uh, sellers or buyers will be paying for the inspections at all is, you know, dependent on the offer that you wrote up. Um, and, and once the inspection report comes through, there's two things that happens. You're either really happy with it and you, you know, are fine with moving forward, no more negotiating. Uh, so that's great, you're not negotiating repairs. Or second, you're unhappy. Um, and then that leads to two more choices, right? You can either walk, so if there's an inspection contingency in place, you can just up and leave. Uh, if that's too much work to be done, you can just, you can back out. Um, or you can go ahead and negotiate repairs with the selling side. Now this comes in a multiple different ways, right? So either they're reducing the list price, they're gonna be fixing things before you uh, move in, um, or they're maybe gonna be crediting you something at the end. Appraisal! What is the appraisal? It's one of the last hurdles that we're gonna be going through before closing on your future home, right? One last place for potential negotiation, but we'll get to that in a second. So what is the appraisal? The appraisal is uh, done by a third party, uh, the appraiser, uh, who's typically hired by the buyer side's lender, right? Lender goes ahead and chooses it and the buyer pays it uh, through their lender fees. Uh, what's the purpose of this? This is to assess the value of the home. That lender wants to make sure that the loan, the mortgage amount that they're you know, putting out here is actually the worth of the home. Um, so each appraiser, they have their own techniques and you know, obviously some of this has changed during COVID, but the end result all remains the same. They give their opinion, their assessed value of the home to the lender and to the buyer side. So you as the buyer, your realtor, we all get a look at it. So two things can happen. Uh, the appraisal, the value of the home comes in at list price or higher. So that's a good thing. Nothing else needs to happen. No more negotiating needs to happen and everything's clear. You're gonna be paying what you agreed to for that list price. Second thing that can happen, it comes in lower than list price and that's where some negotiating is gonna probably gonna have to happen. Your lender is going to be paying for, they'll be giving you a low amount for whatever that appraised value was. So if there's a bit of difference in there, it's either the list price is gonna have to come down or someone else is gonna have to pay for that, either buyer or seller. Um, if no you know, agreement can be made, then the deal will likely fall through. It's closing day, one more step to buy your future out, no, just kidding. It's closing day, what does this mean? This means that we're signing a bunch of paperwork and we're transferring everything from the seller's name into your name. Uh, the house is one step closer to being yours. Now, we're not officially there, right? We're maybe, you know, because we got our home loan authorizing things to be funding and stuff. So, unless we're that <clears throat> high school chemistry teacher paying through cash, uh, we're gonna still have a couple more steps, or one more step, excuse me, and that's for it to fund and record. All right, so funding's gonna be happening when your lender wires the funds to the title company who then sends things to the seller side, thus officially paying for your house. Recording happens when all, that, all those official documentations, you know, saying everything's been paid for and everything that you've been signing is sent to the county assessor's office, thus officially making everything yours in your name, right? This house is now yours. And that about does it, that's you buying a home. So buying a house, it's a dream sought out by many, everybody kind of wants one, right? But can feel really overwhelming at times. So that's why it's really important to find an agent that you wanna work with and who's gonna be doing all this hard work for you. I really hope you enjoyed watching it. Thanks for stopping by. I'm Elizabeth Benedict, Associate Broker over at ERA Sellers and Buyers Real Estate. Thanks for watching. 
If you like what you saw and want to see more, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Uh, in the meantime, if you're looking for an awesome realtor, reach out to me today and I'd love to help you write the next chapter of your homeownership story.